Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. Time no now for some track and field action. Well, former Kingston College star sprinter Javon Matteson is now healthy and ready to deliver on the promise shown as a junior athlete. Having left Casey, Matteson went to Florida State University in 2019 and after a promising start to his collegiate career, COVID-19 and an Achilles injury which required surgery derailed his progress. Well, now under the guidance of coach Glenn Mills, there is renewed hope. He had a sit down with our very own Ricardo Chambers. Javon Matheson, first of all, how are you doing? I'm not too, but I'm doing, doing fine. No complaints. Yeah, that's good. Let's start by talking about the Javon Matheson in high school. You mm. were an absolute star. Um, I remember your name being on everyone's lips from you were in class four, just 11 or 12 years old, before you even competed at champs. Um, you ran the 100, you ran the 200, you ran the, the 400 meters. As an 11 year old with that type of attention, what was it like for you? Um, honestly, it was, it was an experience. I enjoyed it though. Um, personally, I always thought that from that younger age, I always thought that I was probably built for things like that, to be honest, all the attention and stuff. So I really didn't mind. I enjoyed it. It didn't bother you at all? No, not at all. <laughs> I oh, enjoyed it. How would you describe your overall experience competing in high school track and field? When you were in class three, U14, you won the sprint double. Yeah. You won a 200 gold medal in class two as a first year class two athlete. Um, and then a lot of things happen, injuries, um, false starts, um, a couple of races where it seemed as if you just jogged through in, in, yeah. in finals. When you reflect, how do you sum it all up? How do you look back at it all now? I always, I always think, I, I think back from time to time and for me, I always look at things from my past as a learning experience. You know, the good times and the bad. I more appreciate the bad because, you know, it gives me a clear indication of what I am and where I need to go to be where I want to be. So, yeah, I enjoy it all, the goods and the bads. Yeah. So, yeah. What's the main lesson you left high school with, you think? Never give up. Always stop trying. Like, it's never a bad life. It's a bad moment, yeah. you know. Um, I always, some, some way, I always, I always find a way to you know, come back better than I always, than I left off. So, yeah, yeah that's really it. Yeah, as I said, I mean, you were one of a, you were such a top athlete in high school, um, and year after year, you would have so many fans who would come to the national stadium to see you compete. And personally, I always felt as if you were one of the most loved athletes at that level um, and not just Kingston College fans because that is expected because yeah. that's where you went to high school but just generally um, neutrals included coming through the system did you feel that love or were there ever moments where you doubted it? Uh, yeah, definitely there, there were moments that I doubted it but you know, just being on the road, interacting with people, I even now, you know, I still feel the love on the road. So, yeah, I, there are moments when I did doubt it, but I always knew that, you know, people from all over, all stretch, stretches of life, I always knew that the support was there. Yeah. Any regrets from high school? <sighs> I just I probably wish I, well, probably I wish I was a little more focused. Yeah. yeah, explain. But, um, there were some aspects, like even now that I think that you know, needs to be worked on, like, like for instance, like strength. That uh, that has always been a been an issue for me. Yeah. But and as I said, I took it as a lesson, and now I'm much more 
I'm much more keen on working on aspects such as that. Because you've always been fast, haven't you? Yeah, always um, have. Yeah. It's interesting you, you talk about the strength, though, because you do come from a, a 400 background. Yeah. Um, I mean, although it wouldn't be strength, like, it's more physical strength in the weight yeah. room, stuff yeah. like that, like, in terms of my body, like, stuff like that, yeah. That's something you didn't like doing back in high school. Yeah, but I've, you know, after all the years, I've, I've come a long way in there. I'm more focused on getting stronger, getting fitter, and keeping, keeping it like that. Yeah. I can only imagine that when you were leaving high school, and we see it so often now, that there would have been offers for you to go pro. Um, you went to university, Florida State yeah. University instead. Talk to me about that period, how difficult it was for you making that decision to go to school as opposed to going pro and why that decision? Because we see so many young athletes these days deciding to go pro right out of high school. Um, I, think, I think everyone's journey is different. At the time, I had opportunities to attend other schools and to pursue a professional career. But at the time, I thought that it was the best option for me, probably to go to school for a year or two, get that experience on that level, and come back and, you know, apply, apply, apply um, my talents on the professional scene. So that was really it. And I just thought that I needed probably a golf in the transition, yeah. and I thought that college would have um, been the right step. Yeah, and so you went to FSU. Yeah, what was that like? It was it was a great experience. I always I appreciate everyone there, yeah. and I appreciate the time that I spent there. But uh, at the time, uh, your career never took uh, off there. Yeah, it kind of yeah, it didn't per se. Um, the first the first two years there, it was great. Um. I was national runner-up in the 4x1. Yeah. I was on that team. The second year, I was um, I was top ten in the in the country in the yeah. 60 meters and the 200 indoor. Yeah. But then, COVID. Yeah. You're um, at 21:13, and I think 6:61. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, I think you're at 20.88 at 200. Yeah. 20.88, 200, 200 yeah. indoors and 660. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it, it started to, everything started to shape into place. And like me, I'm not, I wasn't the best indoor runner. So yeah. for me to give, give our results like that, it was a, for me a step in the right direction for what was supposed to be an amazing outdoor. But because of COVID, yeah. Yeah, that didn't, the, COVID, the, um, the, in, the outdoor season didn't happen. Yeah. And then you had the Achilles injury. Yeah. And that was a difficult period of your yeah. time at FSU. Um, tell me a little bit about that. What happened and the recovery process and how difficult it was for you? Um, the injury happened my um, junior year. Junior year in university. My first meet outdoor. And I just came out of nowhere. I was literally was 30 meters into the race and my colleagues just went. So. My season was over after that, and it was just, I did a surgery, like a few days after, and I was just focused on recovery after that. Yeah. Yeah. What was that period like? How tough was it? <laughs> I was, it was difficult. I was pretty much immobile. I had to depend on others to, even to do simple things as, such as going upstairs. Like, I was pretty much, I, you know, I was pretty much immobile, so, and from going from, like, I'm going from training every day, giving my all on the track, and to being completely immobile, and learning how to walk again, and then learning how to run, uh, it was a really difficult period. Yeah, and you were explaining to me that had you not done the surgery, it could have been worse. Yeah, I'd be out for, I would have been completely immobile for, for over a year. So the surgery, had, like it was the best. It was definitely the best option. Yeah. 
The prognosis initially, was it always that you would be able to come back and, and you would be able to still have a solid track and field career? Yeah, definitely, because it, was a, it wasn't a full-blown tear. It was about 20%. Mm -hmm. So with hard work and dedication, yeah, it was always thought that I could come back and come back even better. What was the support system like at the time? Because when you go through something like that and you're away from what you love and what you're accustomed to, it can be extremely difficult. Um, so talk to me about your support system in that period and, and whether you felt like you had enough around you. Um, I think, especially my coach at the time at university, I think he tried, but the college system is like it's really fast paced. So even if he wanted to be there in ways that like he wanted to be, it wasn't set up like that. It was like touch and go. Like it was just touch and go. It's a fast moving thing, you get me? So yeah. Did you time, ever feel alone? Definitely. Definitely. And it was a lot of like it was a major decision as well to like just pack up and come back home and but you know, I made another decision and made a sacrifice and stayed that extra year just to you know recover fully. Just to ensure that Yeah, it was everything was in place. So. Yeah. Talk to me about the times you felt alone and how difficult those periods were. Um, I was alone in a sense because I was alone in a sense, but I wasn't really alone. I always had people like here back home who always checked on me, believed in me, and even my teammates there. And you know, I always had a strong support system and it carried over into college. Yeah. So you know, it wasn't that bad. I just had to like do a lot of self-evaluation yeah. and just in myself be strong and just yeah. you know, work on coming back. Like even just being able to walk, yeah. like I took it a step at a time, and you know, set small goals. I like I try to take five extra steps today, yeah. ten extra steps tomorrow. Like even just that, and just motivating myself, and always thought about where I wanted to be, not in the moment, but a couple of years from then. And that was different from when you were in Jamaica, right? Because if you had an injury in Jamaica. I would think that especially being a Kingston College athlete and a yeah. Kingston College star athlete, that the problem might be you want people to go away rather than people yeah. being there for you consistently. Yeah, but I mean, it's a whole, I've never experienced anything like that before. I was on crutches for probably, I was on crutches for probably a month. I was in a boot for probably two months and then yeah, so it was a whole different experience and being around people that you know, love and care for you, care about you, yeah, it's a whole different experience. Yeah, it's a whole different experience, especially being so far away from home. Yeah, I, I can just imagine. You spoke about the decision you made to come back home yeah. and join the racers track club. Um, sounds to me like it was a relatively easy decision yeah, for you that um, given everything that had happened, you felt, okay, maybe home is the best place to be. What's that been like? It has been definitely, it's, it's an amazing experience being here and being around. Firstly, a coaching staff and a head coach who probably believes in you more than you believe in yourself sometimes. And that's Glenn Mills. Yeah, definitely. He is a major, a major part of why I, um, even considered continuing track and coming back home. Yeah. So yeah, I knew that once I was under his tutelage, you know, the, the sky is definitely the limit. You thought about stopping? Yeah, I have, but I've been doing track all my life from I was probably six years old. So it was, it wasn't an easy decision to stop at all, but it did cross my mind. Yeah. Um, last season, which was your first season back home and on the coach mills, you ran a couple of 10 fours, yeah. um, which I personally thought was extremely good given what you had gone through. Yeah. 
how did you view the season that you had? Um, I always, 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 um, the expectations that I place on myself, you know, they're always high, I always have lofty goals. So, to even go out there, I never, but this time around I didn't place any expectations on myself at all. Yeah. I just wanted to go through the season healthy or as healthy as possible and just getting, just trying to get used to competing again and, you know, giving him all because I've always been a competitor and, you know, it was always, last season was always trying to get back to that, getting back that competitive edge. Yeah. Is it tough mentally, um, especially if you ever lose to athletes you think that you are ahead of and under normal circumstances you would be beating and given your history um, and even in your difficult moments and and your recovery stage and trying to come back does it get mentally draining in any way to have those defeats even as you work your way back definitely um, as I said I have high expectations for myself and but I use it as motivation you know, I always use it as motivation. I always look back and I, after I meet, I'd go back to practice. I got a, a new person, basically, giving it that extra 10%, that extra, even that extra 1% each time. I was trying to get better, that's really it. And trusting that sooner rather than later, I'd be back to where I know I can be. Yeah. What's the outlook for 2024? It's an Olympic year. Um, the same as always, going out there, competing and giving them all and you know, just working hard, yeah. staying focused and believe and just having self-belief and having belief in those around me yeah. to you know, help me to get to where I need to be. Yeah. Um, come February, you're going to be 25, is it? Yeah. At 25 years old, do you still harbor the hopes and dreams that you did as a 16, 17, 18 year old of one day standing at the top of an Olympic or a world championship podium? And do you think you still have that quality in you? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, like even my coach always says that the talent is always there. You know, it's just to Stay, it's just staying focused, staying dedicated, and having that drive and believing that you can definitely do what you have in you. So, yeah, I definitely do. And I'm working toward those lofty goals. Yeah. If you had to give some advice to a 12, 13, 14, 15 year old who is coming through the system now and, and trying to find their way in this business that is track and field and sport in general, what would you say to them? Um, really just enjoy the moment, have fun, you know, keep those around you, your friends, your family, those around you, keep them close and really just have fun. You know, it's not, you know, one bad race doesn't define who you are, one bad moment, one injury, how it doesn't matter how big or small that setback is. Just keep believing in yourself and you know, just have that drive and that dedication and that work ethic and it will definitely you know, bring you all the way. Yeah, sounds amazing, Javon Matheson. By the way, do you have any idea where we'll see you first this year? Um, yeah, I'll be, if all goes according to plan, I'll be at the Campadon Classics. For, um, opening with the 400 meters, I have probably a few of those to, to um, compete in before you know, going down into my pet events. All right, we look forward to that. Javon Matheson, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs>